Mouse Paint by Ellen Stahl Walsh. Once there were three white mice on a white piece of paper. The cat couldn't find them. One day, while the cat was asleep, the mice saw three jars of paint. One red, one yellow, and one blue. They thought it was mouse paint. They climbed right in. Then one was red, one was yellow, and one was blue. They dripped puddles of paint onto the paper. The puddles looked like fun. The red mouse stepped onto a yellow puddle and did a little dance. His red feet stirred the yellow puddle until, look, he cried, red feet in a yellow puddle makes orange. The yellow mouse hopped onto a blue puddle. His feet mixed and stirred and stirred and mixed until, look down, said the red mouse and the blue mouse. Yellow feet in a blue puddle make green. Then the blue mouse jumped into a red puddle. He splashed and mixed and danced until purple, they all shouted. Blue feet in a red puddle make purple. But the paint on their fur got sticky and stiff. So they washed themselves down to a nice soft white and painted the paper instead. They painted one part red, and one part yellow, and one part blue. They mixed red and yellow to paint an orange part, yellow and blue to paint a green part, and blue and red to paint a purple part. But they left some white because of the cat. For this lesson, we're going to explore watercolors. You'll need your watercolor box, a brush, a piece of paper out of your watercolor paint pad, some newspaper maybe to put underneath your watercolor painting, and a container of water. Watercolors are actually dried cakes of color pigment. So in order to use them, we have to wake them up. And we wake them up by using water. So I'm gonna wake up one of my favorite colors, which is blue. And I'm going to go ahead and try it out on my paper. Today we're just exploring. So there's no right or wrong about what we're doing on our paper today. So I'm gonna get my brush nice and juicy wet. And I'm going to drip some water into the blue pigment cake. There's another dip. And then I'm just going to see what it looks like on my paper. Watercolor is magical. It moves around on the paper and you can help that happen just by using your brush. Now that I have a nice blob of blue on my paper. I'm going to rinse my brush off and I'm gonna try another color. One of my other favorite colors is yellow. So I'm gonna take some yellow, wake up that box of yellow, that cake of yellow with some water, and I'm going to put my yellow circle right next, I'm gonna bump it right into the blue like this. And we're going to watch and see what happens. Bump it just a little bit more. Maybe we'll just overlap it a little bit. What do you think will happen? What color are we making here? Looks like there's a tiny bit of green coming through. Let's try a new color. Let's wake up the red and see what happens when we add red bumped up against the yellow. These three colors are called the primary colors. They're the most important 
colors in your paint palette in your box. With these three colors, you can create all of the other colors in the box. That looks like fire going into the yellow blob and it looks a little orangish, doesn't it? All right, let's try something new. This time I'm going to start with a very wet brush and I'm gonna make a circle or a blob over here with just water, just water. And then I'm gonna pick up the blue again because it's woken up already and I'm just gonna tap my brush and watch what happens. I can help that paint move around in the water by picking up my paper and tilting it and the paint stays inside the wet place on my paper. That's exciting. All right, let's try that again. Let's try it with the, oops, look at that, ran right into that block. Let's try some yellow. One thing with watercolors is that you need to wash your brush off each time, each time you use a new color. That way you won't mix up colors in your paint box. Yellow on a puddle of water becomes kind of greenish. Go ahead and touch another one here. And you got it, we're gonna add some red and see what happens. Just tapping into that wet blob. Remember, you can move it around. You can even move it up into the other ones. This is magical. Now I'm gonna choose a new color. I think I'll wake up the purple, little glob of water, two globs of water to wake up the purple. And I'm gonna try something new here. I'm going to add, yep, you got it, a purple blob. But then I'm gonna take, wash my brush off with just some water and I'm just gonna pull that color down out of the purple blob into this red. You can pull it down into any one of your other blobs, but maybe you pull it all the way through and you create a new color on the way through. So the other way to do that is to make a purple blob on a wet spot on your paper and then lift up your paper and watch it drip. Lots of dripping going on in my paper, but that's what we want to happen. We want some drips to happen. I just added some water to help that get going. There we go, lots of drips. This is why we're using paper underneath today. You may even wanna have a paper towel handy in order to wipe up your drips as you're painting. All right, I'm gonna go back into these purple globs, these purple circles up here, and I'm gonna choose some red, which is already awake, awake. And I'm just gonna put some globs right in there, just tapping my brush into those spaces to see what happens. Watch the, the paint move through the wet parts of those purple circles. Maybe I start, I haven't used my green. I think I'm gonna wake the green up. And maybe I'll just pull some lines down. And when you push your brush, as you're pulling, you'll notice that you'll have a fatter line. And if you lift up, you'll have a thin line. It's very helpful when you're doing pictures of flowers and leaves or mountains or the ocean, push down, pick up, push down, pick up, push down, pick up. Now see this puddle? I'm just gonna pull that down here a little bit farther and fill in some of the lighter spots. And then I'll come all the way down. Thinking about the elements, you could also 
do some shapes or some circles and dots. We've already made some dots, but we could use our, the skinny part of our brush to make some swirls, curly cues. We can add another color into those by just tapping in the spaces where you've already got. Go. So fat lines and skinny lines, we can make some swirls. We can do dots, let's use some orange. And we'll just put some some dots, maybe some kidney shaped dots as well. Remember, you can add another color to make those more interesting by just tapping a new color on the inside. One thing you can do with your brush, your watercolor brush, I'm gonna wash mine off and make sure it's clean, is that you can use it as a tool to section up some paint that you don't want on your painting. For instance, this little glob right here that's settled, I don't really want that there. So I'm gonna dry my brush off and I'm just gonna tap into that space and my brush kind of becomes a vacuum cleaner as it kind of cleans that space off of the color that I'm, I really don't want there. So I'm, then I can wipe it off again and finish cleaning that little space off there that I didn't want. When parts of your painting are dry, you can add more color, get that a little bit wet and wake up the black, and we can add some color on top of the dry places. They won't run because it's called dry on dry and I'm adding some color on top. When you're painting with watercolors, sometimes you have to wait for places to dry before you add details or other colors. You have to be patient. My water's pretty murky now. I think I might need to get some clean water before I continue. I'm just going to continue to explore some uh, watercolors in different places and some different techniques with my brush, painting thin, painting fat. I hope you'll have fun with your watercolors too. lots of fun waking up my watercolors and trying them out on my paper to see what they can do. I hope you did too. 
you can try another painting, use some new colors, add some new ideas, and see what you can make.